Thank you, doctor. Um, up next, we have Elaine. Elaine, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, doctor. I just have a question. Do you, what's your take on air fryers? And if you don't recommend them, like what are some cooking tools or gadgets that you tend to use? Air fryers. Mary says they're good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mary, Mary, Mary sitting over here, uh, just, she's, she's, you know, kind of my live audience. <laughs> anyway, uh, she says they're good. Uh, it brings up the issue of acrylamide that we talked about earlier. And those of you who are worried about acrylamide, I gave you my thoughts on it, which is produced at high temperatures. I think fryers use high temperatures. But otherwise, you don't want to fry with oil. And if this gives you a way of heating things without oil, that's the main problem. There's nothing wrong with the potatoes are the ideal food, but French fries, they have 40 times as much fat as a potato. You know, it's the French fries. It's the, it's the sour cream and the butter on the baked potato. That's what's making people fat and sick. You know that. Thank you for that, doctor. And up next we have, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Is it Rowan? Uh, you're up next if you can unmute yourself, thanks. Oh, actually, I think you were unmuted and I messed that up. So go ahead and try that one more time for us, Rowan. Is that good? Can you hear me? Perfect. Thank you. Great. Hi, Dr. McDougall. I've been following you for a long time, too. And I joined a little late, so I don't know. You might have gone over this and you can disregard if you have of um, ERPR breast cancer positive, her negative uh, breast cancer with your diet, which I've been on forever and just too much oils, which I've totally knocked out. But just curious, if you've already gone over this, I'm sorry, but if you haven't. Uh, we didn't go get over this, but it's a little detailed for this audience. Uh, <clears throat> estrogen receptor positive, estrogen receptor negative are you know, important subcategories in people who have breast cancer, just like progesterone receptor positives and negatives and Herceptin positives and negatives. There are all kinds of subtypes that uh, doctors try and evaluate for the woman with cancer with the idea that we can better target the chemotherapy. You know, I'm not, I'm not a big believer in chemotherapy for any kind of cancer, much less breast cancer. There are some, some, there are some exceptions, but in general, these drugs are, are poisons that were developed during World War II as nerve gases. And uh, they're very nonspecific and unfortunately they kill the host, that means the person as fast, if not faster than they kill the tumor. Uh, estrogen receptor is important in the sense that if you deprive the tumor of estrogen, and you can do that by taking your ovaries out, which is what I recommend usually, or you can use tamoxifen or aromatase inhibitors, which are drugs that block the effects of the estrogen. So that's uh, the other way you can do it, or you can take cancer chemotherapy, the standard cancer chemotherapy, which works by castrating you kills your ovaries. And I've always felt it's much more humane to put a woman through simple laparoscopy surgery to take out her ovaries as opposed to making her throw up for a year and losing her hair. But, you know, that's just me, I'm a GP. No, I'm not, I'm an internist, I'm a board certified internist. So maybe that says a little bit more about my education, I'm not sure. I'm a doctor that really, really has enjoyed taking patients for the, taking care of patients for a half a century. That's what I am. And a grandfather too. Don't forget that. We got to work at saving the planet. We got to go out and tell everybody, tell everybody that, that the, 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 the cows are killing us. You know, they're, they're killing people. So are the rest of the, the animals that you know, are domesticated. We got to stop this. We can do it. Doctor, thank you. Up next, we have, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, uh, uh, Marjoline, and I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to unmute as well. Uh, good day, Mr. McDougall. I'm a great fan and like to see your, uh, oh God, I'm a Dutch, <laughs> Dutch girl, so it's a bit difficult for me. But I have Hashimoto's and I read on your website, you had a newsletter from 2005. And you said uh, when you have Hashimoto's, you cannot get off thyroid medication. What is right. your opinion about it now? It's still the same. 
See, Hashimoto was a, a Japanese uh, scientist who described mm. autoimmune thyroiditis, where the body attacks itself and destroys the thyroid gland. That was in like, like 1917, he described it. Anyway, that's why they call it Hashimoto's. It means the body attacks itself. Uh, your doctors usually say you have autoimmune thyroiditis. In other words, the body autoimmune attacks the thyroid gland and causes it to be inflamed autoimmune thyroiditis. And once it attacks and kills, you cannot regrow the thyroid cells. So, you know, unfortunately, if you truly have hypothyroidism due to destruction of the thyroid gland, it's not going to grow back. And thyroid supplementation, and I use levothyroxine. I don't use the natural armor type. You know, stick your nose in a bar of armor, and you know why I don't use it. It's it's made from cow and pig thyroid glands, and it brings along with 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 every every capsule a, a whole bunch of viruses and prions and other microbes that may threaten your health. So anyway, that's why I use the levothyroxine. But you can check. The only way you can tell that whether or not you need thyroid medications, you have to make an agreement with your doctor that you're going to stop the medication. And you're going to see what happens over the next three to six weeks. And in three to six weeks, if your thyroid gland works, then it'll start working. You can see it by a simple test called a TSH test, thyroid stimulating hormone. So, you know, that's the way you do it. I, I don't know of any other test that's out there. You got to see if your own gland kicks in. If it doesn't, you may have to be on thyroid medication the rest of your life which is not a big deal because it's a very well-tolerated medication.